All right. Hi, everybody. Today we're doing something a little bit new. I am here with my good friend, Justin, and we're going to talk about the free Brave Art and Creative Wellness Workshop that he joined this weekend. And he is not a visual artist by trade. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to him to tell me a little bit more about just his connection with creativity. But um, I wanted just to kind of give everyone a, a sample and peek into our free workshops to see uh, what they're like from an outsider's perspective from a non-artist. Justin, can yeah. you explain a little bit about how you are connected with creativity? Yeah, I think mostly for me, it's a writing. Um, uh, you and I have a strong connection through uh, comedy and, and, and improv and, and comedy writing. So I think that's my creative outlet. So uh, writing is how I, I, I try to express myself. I'm not a visual artist um, by trade, just by reputation. <laughs> and he came and uh, let himself be vulnerable and brave and tried out the workshop. And uh, the rest of this will be just a conversation between us on how that went and what he learned about himself. You took the free workshop yesterday. Mm -hmm. And as a uh, non uh, a non practicing visual artist, or uh, you took it as a non artist. Yeah. Um, and I would love to hear how the experience went for you and if you got anything out of it, what that yeah. was. Yeah. Um, so. I went into it with the expectation of like, this is going to be a time to like slow down, um, uh, express myself a little bit, maybe kind of see what's lurking under the surface that that's not totally top of mind for me, but something that might be there, but I'm not aware of. My intention I said was to be present. And um, I was, I, as soon as I started the drawing exercise, started immediately doing this I, there's a shape that I always doodled like my whole life did that immediately and thought well that was rote just like relax and just like do what feels good next and I just started doing what felt good next and just kept I stopped thinking stopped worrying about which color I just grabbed and all that stuff um and uh so it was really like a relaxing experience the 30 minutes went by super fast and then we did the brain dump and after the after the writing dump, I was like, oh, my God, exactly what was happening in my brain is just what I dumped onto the paper over there. Where I, I, I like it's a very like colorful matrix. Mm -hmm. It's organized chaos. And that's how I was feeling at the moment. There's all this stuff going on right now in life where things I feel like are moving very quickly and I'm just trying to keep everything in its place. Right. And it's also interesting and, and different, um, but um, it, it's moving quickly. And I'm, I'm just trying to like be, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of it <laughs> or ahead of it if I can or whatever. Um, and uh, it was really cool, like listening to people talk through what their writings were and what was top of mind for them. Um. And there was a ton of like really interesting things that uh, my girlfriend Gina was also doing it next to me. She mm -hmm. took the thing too. And we were like, we thought we were just going to like make some drawings and like, you know, meditate for a little bit. And we've learned so much about like why we're doing any of this because she works in miniatures. Okay. And she, she picked up like, holy shit. So the one thing that we both like connected to was like, everyone's talking about how when they're doing their thing they put on a podcast put on music and it's something to listen to but it's actually to distract yourself just enough mm -hmm. that you can let something happen and it reminded me it felt like um when uh douglas has something in his mouth that i don't want him to have in his mouth your dog douglas <laughs> my dog douglas. <laughs> not not a child <laughs> or a brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I will like if he's like he, he's usually pretty good and he'll drop it but if he's not and it's really interesting to him and this could be like a really gnarly problem in your brain um you have to show it something else for it to like go well maybe maybe that's what I want to be doing and he'll put down his thing and then get to that and then I can quietly pull what he had to the side and then have a look at it and I was like 
that's kind of what we were doing on Saturday. We were distracting ourselves just enough mm -hmm. through some expressions and just making marks and something floated to the surface. And then we took a second to just reflect. And then it was like, okay. So when I distracted my brain, I could actually see what it was that was just under the surface that I actually couldn't articulate before. Mm -hmm. And our minds were blown by that. Um, she works in miniatures and she does a lot of that work. She's like, that's exactly what happens. I put on a podcast, a murder podcast, and I sit there and I, and I do. As you do when you want to relax. <laughs> and I put on the, I, I do my crafts and she's like, and then all of this stuff comes up and then it helps you kind of identify what's happening and like kind of work through, you know, the emotions that are surfacing from that. Like it's. Speaking of emotions, I think we're going to have a little person break in. <laughs> oh, good. I hear a lot of emotion. Oh no, she's going upstairs. Okay. Paul's got it handled. Can you hear that? Those ball. I can't hear it. Okay, good. Um, then there's absolutely nothing going on behind me. <laughs> yeah. No, um, nothing. Yeah, but no, that's a really good point. And it's one of those things where if I tell you the steps on paper, it's like, all right, you know, let's do the thing. But when you actually go through the process, it it really can be this thing that connects ideas that you it seems super obvious now that weren't obvious before. Right. right? And there are little things that we do constantly like I'm such a huge person like I numb out like that's my my drug of choice right is like scrolling through Facebook and looking at memes or you know having YouTube on I mean I brush my teeth in the morning with YouTube on catching up on like late night talk shows and I've realized that I just distract myself from all the things yeah. and I don't think that's wrong you know occasionally I just think I need to also have time for my brain mm -hmm. here my myself yeah and that's i think what the what the process does for me mm -hmm. um oh uh oh um well good i'm really glad that you guys like the experience um it it's one of those things where when i introduce it to, to people who haven't gone through it before i in my mind, right? Like all of my little critical editor voices are like, oh, it sounds so simple. People are gonna be totally checked out. They're not gonna be interested in it. And then at the end, right? When you hear people sharing you, it's like, okay, no, this, like, I know this is meaningful to me, but it's also meaningful to other people. Yeah. People do, you know, it's like a safe place to feel your feelings. Yeah. And I like that it's not just, superficial right like there's yeah. there's some depth to it that's kind of this like there's always someone it seems that has like some really profound um just really profound connection with it and often lots of people who have meaningful tidbits that they get and they learn about themselves so yeah I'm, I'm thrilled when that happens. Makes me feel good to hear that you guys had a good experience too. And just like little connections can kind of change your path just enough to make life easier for you or better for you or bring more clarity. So, yeah. It also, and also, a little uh, when you hear people share the validation of everyone feels really dumb when they start writing the witness statement, yeah. you're like, well, uh, I, I, I don't have it. Like everyone, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have it. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then you just start going and, and it's, it's because it's great to hear when people share their, their first few uh, entries are like, I'm not sure what I'm going to write. I, I, you know, I'm not really sure how I feel. Like, Fuck you, Debbie. Because uh, <laughs> right there, like <laughs> yeah. everyone got somewhere interesting yep. with, with enough time. And so it, that was great because, you know, that's how I felt. And I wasn't sure if other people were going to get right mm -hmm. into the, like, oh, I have the message. I have it. And they're just going to go. I felt like, am I dumb? Because I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going. And then as I started getting into it, it was like, okay, here it is. Like now I understand what's happening. Yeah. And yeah. it takes, you know, if I'm, if I'm thinking to myself again, the thinking I think is key, right? The less you can think, 
the better yeah. it works. Yeah. Because if I sit down and say, I'm going to journal today and I start writing. And if I start thinking like, what's the biggest problem I have? Let me start here. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work the same for me. It works better yeah. when I start out saying like, oh, Reese was having a really hard time today. And then this happened. And then I'm like, and that's why I'm so mad. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess I am mad. I didn't really even realize I was mad because I was shoving it down with clips of Jimmy Kimmel, you know? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I love the process because I really feel like every time I go through it, I really do feel like there's less pushing down on my shoulders. Yeah. Just, like, yeah. It kind of clears out the cobwebs. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of the muck that we walk through and we're just used yep. to walking through. Yep. Um, yeah and yeah i just i love it and the thing i love about doing like the five week sessions that are coming up uh is that i get to do this three times a weekend so because i'm doing it with everyone i still get all the benefits right and it's me and i've been doing this for a long time but every time i do it i still get the same benefits so it's not like you do it five times and like everything wears off and you don't get any insights anymore your problems are all solved wouldn't that be nice um right. it's still you know this is gosh 10 11 years later since i started learning this um every single time i go through it i feel better at the end and it's probably a lot like meditation i know you often meditate and you don't always feel like meditating, I'm sure, when you start doing it. But by the end, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. Um, <clears throat> and it, you know, uh, Gina mentioned, like, she was like, I I got the, I, I was doing the part where I was distracting my brain to do a craft. Mm-hmm. And then feelings were flowing, but I was never witnessing and I was never actually paying attention to why or what I was putting together mm. that day or why it was so important for, for me to make a toilet out of these like plastic parts. Like, yeah, I wasn't sure why that was so important to me that day. Um, but the reflection piece, the witness piece is the the healing part of it to help surface like what's actually going through. And that is what's make it that makes it therapeutic. Mm-hmm. But you're right, like you never feel like doing the thing. Mm -hmm. uh just like when I start my witness statement I'm not I don't feel like doing it I feel stupid I don't have anything to say yeah and then a couple minutes pass and then it's and then then it's everything then it's for the rest of the day it's a clean pair of shoes and like a freshly (laughs) like I just brushed my teeth I feel clean my shoes are bright like everything's great (laughs) so glad I did it but um you know didn't want to start it Yes. Um, One of my friends was on and she texted me after and just said, um, she's like, wow, thanks for the free therapy session. (laughs) She's like, it was super cathartic. Um, Again, I'm not a therapist. However, it is a therapeutic process. And then she said something I thought was really cool. She said, thank you for making hard feelings feel normal. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. That That was really good. I noticed a few things about how you handle the sessions really well. Um, it was a completely safe space to whatever you were going to put out there. And you made it clear the idea that like no one here is running away. And what you're going to find is that whatever you're going to say, people are just going to sit here mm-hmm. and smile at you. And no one's running away and it's not scary to, to all of us. So just let it go. Let it fly. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, you were not it was a no commentary zone. And also like you, you can comment if you, cause you're setting people up, you're asking people to share, mm-hmm. they're sharing. And then you have a, you have to transition from that share to another share. And it would be so easy for you to go. That's beautiful. What you just mm-hmm. said was amazing. Thank And then move, which I would feel compelled to do. Mm-hmm. And you didn't, you, you, you said, thank you so much for sharing that. And then you move to the next person, which was like, and it was so nice because uh, it, it's a really pro move because it takes away like the competitive nature people have to like, well, I have a better story coming up or whatever. It's just like, there's no judgment. It's just going to be a clean, thank you. 
and then moved to the next. And like, it, it was a very therapeutic session. It was a free therapy session. Well, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, but thanks for saying that because that is exactly my goal. My goal is for it to be a super safe space. The no comment rule is one that I think because I want it to mean to stay a safe space and I want people to be able to express themselves however they feel right in the art portion and the writing portion and if I looked at your drawing and said wow Justin I really like those lines that you made like I really love the colors you chose um especially that while you're doing it right. your head you might have been like oh well, I was just going to change all the colors I was using maybe I shouldn't because Jackie likes these and like maybe right. they're good maybe I'm wrong and I shouldn't right. change the colors right. all these little things even the positive comments can be derailing and take us away from ourselves and That's so right. this whole process is geared toward you right it's each individual person is coming together for themselves yeah we're not coming to perform for the group yeah. um and it definitely takes practice especially with people new to the process to not because we all want to make people feel good, right? We, I want to hear people say nice things about me. I want people to say, oh my gosh, I love that. It's so great. Um, but the thing that this process kind of stresses and, and teaches us and reminds us of is that it doesn't really matter if you like or don't like what I made because I'm not making right. it for you. I'm making it for me. And I might not even like it, but that doesn't mean it's not useful. Mm -hmm because I can mm -hmm. still not like something and then I can write and figure out why I don't like it. What does it remind me of? Why do I typically not use these colors? You know, who knows? Well, um, certainly, we'll have, sorry, uh, because I love that way that you clarified, this isn't capital AR, this is lowercase AR. Actually, we're just making marks. Mm -hmm. And it took a ton of pressure off. Like oh, I, I, I felt pressure going in. Like uh, I, can, I haven't draw, I haven't drawn anything in a while. Like I wonder what it's gonna look like, and I wonder who's gonna be in the group. I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of artists here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember like kind of like making my marks and starting, and then like glancing over at what Gina was doing, and I was like, that looks really good. Oh no, I'm not an artist. And then kept going. Um, but the lack of commentary on what people made of just like interesting and thank you for sharing. Um, if you had said to any of them, like, that's beautiful. Oh, you are an artist. Mm. I would have been like, well, oh, that's art and mine's not. I would have immediately been like, oh, well, must be nice to be able to draw like that, I guess. <laughs> I can't do it. But it, it, it took all of that pressure off. And then it was just marks. So it wasn't like uh, making the mark. I wasn't making art. I was making marks. And it was necessary to mm -hmm. to understanding what's kind of under the that hum that was happening that I couldn't articulate. Good. Good. Thank you for sharing that. It makes me feel really good that that you felt all of those things because that's exactly what I'm going for. And I, it is lowercase a art slash, let's just not even call it art because it's a loaded word. it is a loaded word, right? And the truth is that this process will work no matter what you do. So mm -hmm. if you literally drew us, drew a horizontal line across your paper, even a crooked horizontal line and just kept tracing that for 30 minutes your brain would still be on autopilot, mm -hmm. right? You just kind of be present drawing that line. And then when you wrote something down, you know, things would still come up. Um, I just, I love, I just love this process because for, for there were professional artists in that group, um, the group that you were in and the professional artists got something out of it just as much as you did. Yeah. And because it doesn't matter. It's not like if you draw a better picture, you get more out of it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's completely off the table. It's not even, again, there's no skill set required in this. It's just participating. Yep. It's, it's, the, it's the true like millennial process where everyone does get a trophy. <laughs> and the trophy <laughs> is like the, the, um, the souvenir of whatever you made, but also right. what you learned about yourself along the way. Right. Yep. So yeah, thanks for coming. It was. It was really awesome. I appreciate your really support. Cool. Glad Gina yeah. was there. It was really cool. Because we each have versions of that. 
Uh, I don't have a mark making version of it. Gina has a miniature making version of it. And she's like, well, that's great because I have this additional step now that I can add to it mm -hmm. to help like understand, you know, what's flowing. And the same thing for me in, in uh, morning pages and stuff like that, where it's like, that's that's exactly what I can do now. Yeah. I, I was kind of dumping those things out, but I wasn't really... Um, I wasn't really distracting myself in the right way in order to mm -hmm. to, to to do it and get started. So that uh, I I'm, I'm like adding a step in front of it now, to sort of like just kind of get myself in a headspace and just sort of doodle some things and write a couple sentences or words or whatever, and then start the writing exercise and to see what comes out. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Justin. Just a little peek inside what it feels like to go through the Brave Art and Creative Wellness workshops um, as a non-artist. So he works with words and comedy and writing, but not so much the visual arts, but it still worked magic for him. So there's just something about this process that I love. If you're interested, please go to JackieSchaumberg.com slash workshops. I'll put a link in the right-hand corner of this page. If you are interested in joining this session, it does begin Friday, April 7th and Saturday, April 8th. I hope you will join us, but the time to register is very soon because I will be keeping these into small groups. So there'll be groups of five to seven people max. So if you're interested, I would recommend registering now. And hopefully I will see you this weekend at the five week Brave Art and Creative Wellness Workshop kickoff for this collage edition. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.